Let's all stand if you would please. Song 402, Isn't the Love of Jesus Something Wonderful? together as we start our service this evening. Father, we're so thankful to be in church tonight, and I'm, I'm excited to get to the lesson this evening about digging into the Word of God and putting everything together that we've learned so far. Thank you for getting us here safely this evening. Thank you for those watching online and those here tonight. I pray for your blessing upon our service. I pray you bless our singing time, and, and uh, Lord, help us to be able to take a breath from our day today, from the busyness that got us here and just really enjoy being around God's people with some fellowship and getting into the Word of God this evening. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. It's on 492 as you're being seated. 492, the longer I sing. Wednesday night, we read from about three different missionaries, or we see a, a video uh, from their mission field. Tonight, we have one missionary that we're going to focus on, and one of my summer projects this summer has been to write, send emails to all of our missionaries that I can contact and get from them 
a summary a biography to put on the board out here. You'll notice that uh, more and more of them have the biographies out there. I try to condense or keep it within about 300, 350 words. Well, with this particular missionary, uh, and it's been typical for, for it to take quite a while for them to get around to doing that, many of them, and uh, some of them I still haven't gotten from them. When I do, if it's lengthy, like this one was, and, and this is Jason Russell in uh, Papua New Guinea, was very lengthy, so I had to really work at condensing it down to fit in that space there. And so uh, around 300, 350 words. So I thought what I would do tonight, and, and after I give a summary, I can't really do all of it, but I can touch on many of the topics. And uh, if you would like a copy of this, just ask me and I'll give you a copy so you can read more of the details. So um, I'm gonna, just gonna read some excerpts from this, and it's uh, just a biography of sorts about the Russell ministry because he is such a great example and has so many interesting stories. And he is in a mission field that is the epitome of a difficult mission field because it's so third world and uh, much of the time, I also got one today I've been working on, uh, Dan Diom in the Philippines, and for years he has worked in a field there in the Philippines where there's no electricity. Um, Brother Russell, when he got on the field, uh, as we'll mention in a moment, they didn't have water. The only fresh water they had when he got there was rainwater and they, it was precious. They had to save it and store it, or they didn't have fresh water. Um, so, and you'll see what happened there, one of the very interesting stories, and you may even remember it when he was with us and he would tell. Well, he does have a video, but we can't show it on Wednesday night. It's 13 minutes long. <laughs> so uh, that's why I'm condensing everything. So let me just, uh, just read some excerpts from this uh, biography of Jason Russell in Papua New Guinea. God called me to be a church planning missionary to the Pop One region of New Guinea on March 3rd, 1995. So to put that in perspective, this was happening about the time Pastor Smith was being called to be our pastor here. I was 19 years old. I visited Papua New Guinea shortly after I graduated from high school after two months traveling around the swamps in New Guinea and coming down with malaria twice upon my sick bed on March 3rd, 1995, God called me while I was in Bible Institute training at Lighthouse Baptist Church. This is Doug Fisher's church in San Diego. We started deputation on October of 1998 and left for the field June 21st, 2000. Anna was nearly seven months pregnant when we arrived. We were thankful to be invited during our missions month, uh, our missions month here at GBCS uh, 2020, when we were added for support. Now, one of the first things he did when he got to the mission field is he took a sawmill with him and he cut down the trees and made the buildings for their uh, original church. Uh, and that's very unusual for missionaries, but it doesn't end there. It goes on, uh, trust me. Uh, Daru Baptist Church, that's the city where he was called to. Very interesting how he settled in that area as well. But we don't have time to go into all that. You can get it and read about it though. Was finally turned over to national hands in January of 2021. So this was the church that he originally started and now it's in uh, nationals hands and he's more free to work in the villages around the area. I teach Bible school, now he teaches Bible school Monday through Wednesday, go out to these students in the villages doing practical training on the weekends. Bible schools both in Daru and Whip, Whippum is the other city that was kind of like a central hub. Daru is more or less remote, it's right on the coast. And so between these two cities is where his work uh, centers, but then it goes out 
as much as uh, six hour hikes that he goes into villages. He'll go six hours to one village and then three hours to a different one and eventually, uh, you know, make his way back after several days, I'm sure, or weeks. Uh, so they have a Bible school in each of those cities, Daru and Whippum. That's W-I-P-I-M. Uh, so, uh, so now, here are some of his ministries, and I'll just go through them and, and, and list them and maybe comment on some of them. He has a Bible FM Western Radio Ministry, and he explains they don't have televisions there. They don't have cell phones there. Kind of hard to imagine, isn't it? Well, if you're 20 or 30 years old, just think back. <laughs> there was a time not that long ago we didn't have cell phones, but there will never be a time that we wanted again. Uh, Baptist drillers. So this was one of the stories that I remember when he was here. He told about how there was a dearth of water there. And so he prayed and started looking for a well drilling machine. And he had one in, in mind but he didn't have the money to get one. Well, he met another missionary in the area that actually had one. So to make it a short story, the missionary still had it in the box. He never even needed it. So he gave it to Brother Russell and, and that became not just a ministry to the needs of the people in the churches there and in the villages that they could go to and give them water. Imagine the value of water. We take so much for granted. And so the government, there were villages that wouldn't even welcome them in. They didn't want Baptists coming into their village. We don't wanna hear what you have to say, you know, just stay out of our village. But when they found out they could drill wells for water, it was a different story. So it opened up opportunities for them. So uh, they, now they have a, a radio station as well and uh, Baptist drillers. The government hires them to drill wells. So God has really used uh, the ingenuity of this man and his ministry. Now, let me read some more. We normally travel off the island every Thursday through Friday for the purpose of outreach. As a result, the Daru Baptist Church is involved in four church plants in different stages with five others still in the seed planting stage. Our mainland churches are also involved in planting seeds that will produce churches in the coming years. So they've been sending out workers from their Bible schools. Uh, he mentions his future plans and some struggles that they've had along the way, uh, but he also gives some highlights of the past 20 years. It should go without saying, seeking the lost uh, seeing the lost saved and transformed by the power of the gospel would top the list. So I sent them a questionnaire and the, he was answering one of the questions that I asked. Uh, Bible school graduates serving as pastors, deacons, and helpers uh, bring me great joy. Uh, just like seeing a baby born is precious to see, new churches birthed is joyous. Uh, when God's name is glorified through our Good works brings inner joy. Ezekiel 38, 23, thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself and I will be known in the eyes of many nations and they shall know that I am the Lord. A few other things and I'll uh, mention some of these just quickly. Health concerns in the Western province of Papua New Guinea. We live in a third world country where sickness, uh, our sicknesses are not adequately understood or cared for. Tuberculosis is a particular problem there and, and other details he gives. Their children's names are, are listed here and you can find this on the board out there too. But they have five children, three of them are adults and two of them actually live in Long Beach. I, was, I didn't know that so I'm uh, hoping to find out where they live and meet them. Um, children, there are three of their children were born on the mission field. And then the last thing he mentions is the language and the custom of Papua New Guinea. Very interesting. We have a missionary family from our church here, as you probably know, that are in Papua New Guinea. And they, one of their tasks is to translate uh, into 
the pidgin and the different various languages. There are 803 known languages in Papua New Guinea. In our church here on Daru Island, we have 12 languages spoken, all from an area that is smaller than LA County. English is the national language. It is taught in schools, spoken in business. It is the official language of parliament. Our churches all use English as their trade language. Culture learned, uh, learning comes with time, and we are still learning after 22 years in the service of the king. Take our prayer bulletins, if you would, please, this evening. We'll go over these tonight. I do have one to add in just a moment. <clears throat> Praise the Lord for this last Sunday. Hope it was a blessing to you as we uh, look from the book of Philippians, what to do with the gospel from Philippians chapter 1. And then Sunday evening, the bitterness of the heart there for that uh, proverb. Hope that was a blessing as well. Daniel Freeman, one of the men from the mission, joined our church. That was a blessing. We're excited for him. And then uh, we had a good time of fellowship. The home builders serving the nachos, and it's been a good time after the Sunday evening services. Praise the Lord that Josh and Alyssa, Nora and Rachel returned safely from their senior trip and got to have a good time in Hawaii. And then praise the Lord that Murda surgery went well, number 38 on our list here. Do want to give you an update about our air conditioning. Now, you may be thinking, Pastor, didn't you say last week that we're going to be in the chapel this week? So we, we, with our uh, live streaming cameras and everything, we can't really change something last minute. And so yesterday I got a phone or a text from Nancy uh, saying that the company would be here this morning and would fix our AC. So we are I was rejoicing. That's wonderful. Got here this morning. They were here. They were working. But they called it quits today around 3 or something like that. So they said, we'll come back tomorrow. So it's kind of too late to switch us over there. But the good news is this should be our last service without some air conditioning, which is not too bad today, but uh, going into these next months. Probably by the time it's winter and nice and cold, we'll get the AC fixed and you guys will be able to enjoy it next year or a break before then, who knows. But anyway, so that's the, that's the reason why we're still here tonight. But praise the Lord that it is getting fixed tomorrow, hopefully to finish that up. Number one, pray for this Sunday morning and Sunday evening service, please. Number two, pray for awesome August. Looking forward so much to having these guest preachers come in. Please be in prayer and please be here and bring people with you. And uh, we're going to be getting all of our people that are on vacation right now and everyone else can be rounding them up for awesome August and getting them in here for these services. Pray for uh, Larry Slater as the DMV is requiring him to have a vision driving test. And uh, he was so excited last week because he told me uh, it's just going to be a written test. But now I'm, I'm just reading here that he has to do the vision part of it as well. Apparently seeing is important when you're driving. And uh, so pray for him if you would. And then if you'll add Sarah Garcia to your list there. Sarah Garcia is Eva Gettler's niece, and uh, Sarah has been diagnosed with thyroid cancer. She's awaiting a scan, and they're praying that it hasn't entered the lymph nodes or the bloodstream yet. And so Sarah Garcia, if you'll keep her in prayer. I have the Torres family here with us tonight, missionaries out of Pacific Baptist here in Long Beach, and they've been in Cambodia for nine years. And uh, so we're gonna get them to come back in September during our missions month. And uh, so we're looking forward to having them back, but it's nice to have you folks with us. Let's pray together, and uh, if you would just pray where you are for these things, and I'll pray where I am, and lead us in prayer, if you would. And, and uh, let's go to the Lord together, though. Father, we thank you for tonight, and thank you for church. Thank you for the Russell family, and uh, for their testimony, and for their hard work in and, and a very difficult area in Papua New Guinea. And pray that you continue to bless them and their family, and use them. Lord, we thank you so much for Daniel joining this last uh, week, our church, and Gloria before that, and, and I believe there's one more of, uh, man that wants to join, and so we're just so thankful to hear that. Thank you, Lord, for the good time of fellowship that we've been having on these Sunday night uh, fellowships after church. We're glad that, and thankful, Lord, for uh, Josh and Alyssa, Nor and Rachel being safe, and, and uh, for the great time they were able to have and enjoy that. Thank you for uh, their uh, senior trip and having a good time there and bringing them back safely. Thank you for Murda's surgery going well. Thank you for our, uh, our air conditioning, Lord, that will hopefully be fixed tomorrow and been waiting on the part since April. And so we're so, so thankful that, uh, Lord, that for these comforts that we enjoy. I'm thankful, Lord, that I haven't heard, and I haven't personally heard one person complain or make any comments. And I just thank you so much for that. Lord, I do pray that you'd bless this coming Sunday and, and that uh, we would just have a great spirit here. I pray that you continue to bring in visitors. I pray there'd be people saved and 
and uh, people that would get right with you, people that would make decisions. Would you do that and, and work in our midst this coming Sunday? I uh, pray that you'd help Awesome August to go really well. Bless these five preachers that are coming in and that are preparing and, and, and praying and planning these messages. And, and Lord, I'm excited to hear what you lay upon their hearts because they don't know what's going on here. They don't know what any struggles or problems that our people have. And so it's just uh, nice to see that when they come in and bring a message that's just right what we needed, it's just obvious to see your hand moving and working. And I pray you bless each of them and their families that are coming in and use them. Lord, bless Brother Slater as he goes in for this test. God, I pray that you'd help him to do well and to help his vision to be clear, help him to uh, be able to pass this. Lord, I also pray that you'd help Sarah with uh, this uh, a scan that she's waiting for cancer. God, I pray that you'd please... Uh, Lord, not have let it already go to the lymph nodes or the bloodstream. I pray that you would just uh, help her and give her healing from this and a path forward and to strengthen her family, I pray. Lord, I pray you bless our message tonight in just a little bit that we get to, and may it be instructional and, and helpful and transformative in our lives. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Just a couple announcements. We'll continue our summer fellowships this Sunday evening after the evening service, and uh, burgers, hamburgers are on the... Uh, menu for that, and so plan on sticking around this Sunday after the service. And then Awesome August begins not next week, but the following week on for the entire month of August. And for September 1st, we'll move our midweek service from Wednesday to Thursday. We'll have some guest preachers uh, from the area in, and so we're looking forward to that. Plan on being here for our midweek services in August. Let's ask the blessing now on the offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the abundant riches with which you've blessed us. Lord, we we are given so much more than just our needs, Lord. We, we just live in luxury really here. Lord, I pray that we would not take that for granted, Lord. May we not hoard the riches that you've blessed us with, but Lord. But may we see others in need around us, all around us. There are people who are in need, Lord. And may we be generous in, in giving to not just the offering, Lord, and the different ministries that we have here, but those that we see in the marketplace, in, in the neighborhood, in our workplace. Lord, may we be, uh, seek opportunities to be a blessing to others, Lord, not just with finances, Lord, but with the greatest gift that could ever be given, Lord, and the gospel. Lord, may we uh, see opportunities all around us to share with others the, the answer to their greatest need. Lord, I pray that you help us to be uh, soul sensitive as we live and work in our world today. Lord, I pray that you bless this offering now as we give back to you what you've given to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. time song 544 oh how I love Jesus
sing. Be seated. Let's take our Bibles tonight, please. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4 in your Bibles. And let's find out tonight as our ushers are getting ready. Anybody need a fill in the blank sheet this evening? Anyone not get one? It helps pass the time. <laughs> right down here, uh, we have one here, Miss Evelyn. Anybody else need a fill in the blank sheet? Hey, how about a pen? Anyone need a pen tonight? All right. Well, we're not getting to the balcony, guys, so good luck with that. All right. Philippians chapter 4. <clears throat> and so we have been putting this series together brick by brick. And again, uh, the, the series here of digging into the Word of God, discovering the treasures of the Bible. And uh, one of my jobs as pastor is to equip you equip you with tools to do the work that you're supposed to be doing. And I want to do that. And so I, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to hit a wide spectrum here. I'm trying to be as simple and as practical as I can be. And uh, for maybe those of you that are just starting out, and then also to give like some, some deeper stuff, some stuff that's maybe for those of you who've been doing it for a while, studying the Word of God, that is. And so I've been trying to, you know, just uh, hit everybody, kind of a shotgun message, you know, just sprays wide there. And uh, I've got one more lesson next week, and that lesson next week, I wanted to teach a lesson on, <clears throat> and, it, and it will be helpful to you whether or not you ever do this, but developing, learning how to put together a lesson, a message from the Bible. How do you put together these sequential thoughts or things like that? And you may say, Pastor, I never intend on teaching a lesson. Well, first of all, you don't know. You don't know what God has for you. But secondly, even just learning how to think in that way really does help you. Anyone in here who has ever taught knows that the greatest way to learn something is to teach it. Because, goodness, you have to really know your stuff. And so sometimes it helps to be able to take a passage of Scripture and put it together as if it were a lesson you were teaching. And, and I'm telling you, it'll be a big help to you next week. I hope you'll be here for that. But today, I want to preach a message here about, I, I'm calling it, putting it all together. Putting it all together. Now, what I'm doing is we've had six weeks of, uh, of this teaching here about digging into the Word of God, and I want you to see, and, and again, if you missed them, please go back. Please go back and listen to them. We had a couple people who've been watching, and they, and they didn't have the fill-in-the-blank sheet, so we have run those copies off. We've filled in the blanks for them, and we've, we've mailed them to them or whatever, and uh, we want you to get those so that you can begin doing this and learning it. Okay, so uh, we're, we're taking all that we've learned now, and we're going to make a game plan, okay? So look at Philippians chapter number 4. <clears throat> I know I just preached through this a couple weeks ago. But look at verse 9. Those things which ye have both learned and received. Now, hopefully you've learned some stuff in the past six weeks. Hopefully you've received some things. It's one thing to be taught. It's another thing for it to be caught. Right? You have to, it has to be, uh, I can teach, 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 but you have to catch it. You have to apply it in your life. So those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do... And the God of peace shall be with you. So Paul is saying here, hey, I've taught you some things. You've observed some things in my life. Now it's time for you to do them. And so the, the application for us tonight is just to take that verse and say simply, you've been taught some things. You've been instructed in some things. I've tried to give you some examples. And now it's time to do it. It's time to do it. Uh, First Timothy, or 2 Timothy 2.15, but study to, show, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Again, a command of God. We're supposed to be in the book. So tonight what I want to do, I want to take time to help you formulate your game plan for how you can have your personal Bible study. If you already have one and it's working swimmingly, then just keep doing that, okay? But uh, I'm assuming for some of us in here tonight that uh, I, I have learned through these last, which next month it'll be six years of pastoring, that I can never go too simple. I can never assume people know things because I want to be able to teach you from the, from, the, from the bare bones all the way up. And so I'm going to teach you very simply tonight a game plan of putting all these lessons, lessons together that we have learned. Let's pray, and I am excited to jump in and teach you tonight. Lord, we ask for your help and wisdom tonight. And, and God, as, as we go through this evening really trying to formulate a game plan for how we're going to start on this journey of personal Bible study. God, I really pray that we would really dig in, as the whole series is called. Lord, I pray that you'd help my mind to be clear and sharp and help us to focus and listen. I know it's been a long day for a lot of people, 
I know some are at home watching and tempted to maybe drift off at times because it's been a long day. But I pray we listen. I pray that we learn and put into action some things that we're hearing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's jump in here, okay? Now, every good execution comes from a good plan. As a basketball coach for several years, I wasn't a good coach, but I tried. And uh, any time that anything went well, it's probably because we actually had a decent plan with what we were doing. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it worked well and there was no plan. But anyway, but, you know, you've heard the phrase, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So what are you going to plan? Now, you plan your vacations. You plan, some of you plan your meals for the week. And you plan all these different things. Why not plan, game plan, for your Bible study time? Let me give you some thoughts here, putting together six lessons into this seventh one here and uh, trying to clarify some things and bring it all together very practically. Number one, when you are beginning your Bible study, prepare. Prepare in advance for your Bible study. Prepare. Uh, what was it, Hosea? Or no, I think it was Amos. Prepare to meet thy God. Hey, I know that's talking about something else, but I think it's a good thing. I mean, if you were called to the president, to the White House, you would prepare some things, all right? Now, I'm not saying that means you've got to get dressed in a suit and tie when you do your Bible study, but there should be a little of preparation there, okay? What do you prepare? First of all, choose a time. You know, it can't be, well, I'll get to it tomorrow. That means you won't get to it tomorrow. That's what that means. If you don't have a time where you are planning on doing this, and, and, and again, just to reiterate, I think I said this in the first lesson of the series, that time may be different day by day. Monday, you may have a time that may not be good for you on Tuesday, and Tuesday's time may not be good for you on Wednesday, and Wednesday's time may not be good for you on Thursday, and so forth. So you have to choose what is going to work for you. Okay. Now your time, uh, it, it, make sure it is enough time that you won't feel completely rushed. All right, God, I got five minutes. So, all right, hurry up. Give me something good. Okay, that's, that's not going to work, okay? So you, make sure you're not rushed. And I'm not saying you got to set aside seven hours or anything, but have a good, a good amount of time. Uh, number two, choose a time that's good for you. Good for you. It doesn't have to be what everyone else does. You know, we hear these things that, you know, you got to read your Bible in the morning or else you're a wicked Christian. I don't know where that's at in the Bible. I haven't found that book, apparently. Maybe I haven't read it. But uh, I think you can read your Bible at night and be okay. I think it's okay for you. I'll be honest, I'm not a morning person. I don't like mornings. Um, I, I, I just, I don't think well early in the morning. And so when I get up and I, I read my Bible in the morning, I do. But I also read at night. And, uh, and so, but in the, in the morning sometimes, I'm like, ooh, I've got to come back to that. I can't think straight. But I know my brain works better at night. Almost every message I preach is, is, is a night message. It comes to me in the nighttime, you know. Uh, that's just how I, I, I operate. But uh, so you have to figure out what works for you, and, and that's what's important. If, now, if you have a set time and you consistently skip that time, that's not the right time. If you have a set time every day at this time, this is what I'm going to do it. This is, but you keep doing it, then that might be the, not be the best time for you if you're continually skipping it. All right. So uh, many of you know Brother Doug Fisher, okay? And uh, down in he used to come preach uh, us on our awesome August every year. Love Brother Fisher. He told me that he he does his messages, okay? That he's preaching to this wonderful church. He prepares all of his messages in his car. In his car, that's where he studies his Bible. He said he has his, his, his house car with like his wife, but his personal car, he doesn't drive anybody in, his personal car, if you look in it, in the passenger seat and floorboard are study books. He's got, he's got his concordance in there. He's got his uh, commentaries in there. He's got his Bible dictionary over there. And he'll go down and park at Coronado or something, or go park at the beach, or go park somewhere quiet, and sit there and study his Bible. And that's where he does his messages. Now, that's weird. <laughs> you know. But if you know Brother Fisher, it's like right on course. But, but what I'm saying is like, uh, that, that works for him. What works for you? What works for you? Figure that thing out. Choose a time. Uh, in the, uh, sub, sub letter three here. If possible, choose a time where you are sharp mentally. Now, I don't mean like if it's possible for you to be sharp mentally. That's not what I mean. I mean, choose a time where it, it's the best time for you mentally. Okay, you want to give God your best. If you are an early morning person and you're a coffee drinker, maybe that means getting up a little bit earlier. It's nice and quiet in the mornings. 
Yeah, around Long Beach, it's not really quiet at nighttime. You'd think, I'll wait till it's quiet at nighttime. You've got fireworks going off in September. You know, you just, you, you know, dogs barking, the marijuana smells helping you study. You know, there's just like, there's a lot going on. But w whatever is good for you, wherever you are sharp mentally, because that's the most important thing is that you're getting something from the Bible that God has for you. So choose a time. Secondly, choose the right place. And, and these are important. I've said these so many times in six years, but they really are important. Choose the right place. I'm lucky. I, I should say I'm blessed. I have a nice office over here where I have two little signs that say, do not disturb. And I can put those on. Actually, I just leave them on the door. But uh, I put one on the door there. And, uh, and so I know, like, and, and Miss Esther and Miss Nancy know, like, like, if I've got that door closed, it's not time to be, because to, uh, why? I, I can use that time to study. And, I, and you may not have that. You may be living uh, with other people, and, and that may be a difficult thing, but you need to choose a place where you won't get distracted. Maybe it is your car. Maybe that would be a, a thing for you. And, it, and if it's great for you, then it's not weird. It's good. Do it. But to choose a place that isn't loud, you know, I got a you, you, dorm room at college. You got guys over here playing loud music and stuff and high five and having a great time, and you're trying to study the Bible. You know, that was a difficulty in college. Three roommates, and now you've got to try to find a place where you can study the Bible and not be interrupted. So that was difficult, but you find a way. So find, choose a time. Choose the right place. Number next here, remove as many distractions as you can. Remove as many distractions as you can. Turn off your notifications on your phone. I mean, look, okay, so on my phone, I have the little thing, and uh, uh, let's see here. I don't even know how to do it. Anyway. Uh, but uh, the thing where you can turn off notifications, all right, I was, was going to show you my wisdom there. I think you just slide down from the top, and there's a little button here that says focus. So this is an iPhone, okay? You may have something else. I can hit that focus, and it says do not disturb. Someone do not disturb right now. And what I have set up on my phone is that the only person I will get notifications from if, if this comes through, is Anthony. No, I'm just kidding. It's not Anthony. It's my wife. That's the only person that I will get notifications from that will beep and buzz or anything like that, okay? So, and, and, and you may just need to do that because the worst thing ever is when you're really thinking on something or you're praying and like there's tears in your eyes and you're begging God and then your phone goes off and that weird ringtone that you have from CSI or something, you know, comes on and you're like, oh, I better check that. You just ruined it. You just ruined the moment, right? And, and so you need to have an opportunity to remove those distractions. That's why early morning is good. You're probably not getting a lot of phone calls at 6 a.m. or late at night as well. But anyway, uh, you may have to just turn some of those things off, but remove the distractions. I am a rabbit trail kind of guy. All right, now I will go and I'll be studying something and I'll say, okay, we're in Philippians, all right. We're preaching about the, uh, out of the book, uh, you know, uh, uh, about the church of Philippi here. And I'm going through, and then my brain will be like, I wonder what Philippi looked like. I better Google Earth that thing right now. I wonder what it looks like now. Look at the market. Do they have Starbucks at Philippi? What's it called now? And, and that's just my brain. And it's gone. And now 20 minutes later, I'm like, what was I doing? You know, and, and it can happen with prayer too, where you get distracted by things. Remove as many as you can. All right, remove as many as you can. Um, I remember praying, and I, I, I walk when I pray, and I'd go by my bookshelf, and for the longest time, I'd just be praying, and I'd walk by my bookshelf, and I'd go over there and pick up a book. Huh. You know, and I'm like, the book's been there for years. You know, why am I just picking it up now? Remove the distractions if you can. I don't, I'm not saying tear your bookshelf down, but remove distractions. Number, no, number next, get a pen and paper ready. Get a pen and paper ready. Short pencil is better than a long memory, something like that. I think we said in the first lesson. Some people have special pens they use, like special Bible pens. I know some of you do that, and I'm not saying that in a way to mock you. I'm saying people do that. Some people have um, like uh, highlighters, special highlighters, and pens that don't bleed through. You know, the, the skinny little pages of Scripture here. Uh, you know, and so they have, pay, have pens that don't bleed through. That's great. Uh, uh, you, you, know, you, you may want to think about doing that have, if you want to have something special there. You want to think about having a notebook just for your Bible study. Um, just some, and then some people just grab a... <laughs> I had one kid in my Bible class. I won't say who it is, but he's up in the balcony right now. But uh, he, had a, a, he had a Bible, and that was how he took notes in class, in my Bible class. He would open the front leaf of his Bible and just write the notes down for my Bible class. And just like all over his Bible, and I'm thinking like, 
where is that Bible now? You know you're not using it, you know, but so you have to find what works for you. If you just have a scratch piece of paper or you're writing it on a napkin and that's your organizational system and it works for you, hey, more power to you, okay? But uh, you need a way to keep track of what you're learning. You got to keep track of something to be able to go back and say, oh, that's right, God gave me that. You need a system that helps you remember what God spoke to you about. So prepare in advance for your Bible study, okay? Have a couple things ready. And that could just be as simple as going to Target and buying a little journal and ordering a couple uh, highlighters on Amazon or grabbing a pen or something or pencil and just having it in in a certain place. Okay, if you ever see me walk in a church, or you'll see me tonight walking home, I've got my satchel with me. It's not a man purse, satchel, okay? And I've always got my pins in there. I've got my, uh, I've got my, my journal, I don't know what else to call it. Uh, and then I've got my Bible, and I, I, know, I know where my stuff is. I've got a routine, I've got a ritual, okay? And then secondly, you're going to choose a passage of Scripture. Choose a passage. So you've prepared, you've thought through for tomorrow, hey, this is what I'm going to do it, this is where I'm going to do it, I've got my things ready, I know my phone's going to go on do not disturb, and I'm going to do that, and uh, and I've got my pen and paper ready to go, and so now you've got to choose where you're going to study. What are you going to study? Several options. Let me just throw out a couple for you here, okay? You could choose to start wherever you are in your Bible reading right now. If it's Genesis 1-1, then hey, you could start there, all right? If it's uh, where, wherever, you could just pick up where you are and say, okay, I'm going to start studying. You could choose a favorite passage of Scripture and start studying there. You could always uh, choose a passage that has been difficult for you to understand. If you've always had a question, you've read through, uh, uh, you know, Jude 22, and of some have compassion making a difference, and you say, why does it say, and of some, you know? And maybe that's something you, you've always wondered, and you want to go and start there. More power to you. Do that, okay? Uh, you could choose the book of the Bible to study from start to finish. And, uh, and I would encourage you to start with a smaller book. But it, you say, well, does it matter where I start? It doesn't matter that much. Um, I would encourage you to start with something easier to grasp. Maybe your, your first study is not going to be Zechariah uh, you, you know, or Revelation. Those are kind of harder books. Uh, you know, Even Ezekiel and things like that are, are more difficult books. I suggest, and I put on there, how about the book of John? I always suggest people read that book first. Uh, John, uh, Romans is a deep theological book. Don't start there. If it's your first time, well, I mean, you can. I'm not going to say no, but Romans uh, is difficult. But John, Philippians... I know we just went through it, but you could learn. Proverbs, a lot, of, a lot of quick little sayings there you could dig into. James, it's a great book of the Bible. Uh, 1 John, great book of the Bible. That's where I'm, I'm at right now is 1 John, my personal uh, Bible study time. I'm taking my time with it. I'm going really slow through it. Sometimes I get through one verse in a day. One verse, and I'm just taking my time, and I'm, and I'm really trying to get what God has for me in that book. So you have to choose your passage, okay? You're planning. Where am I going to start? You know, and, and, then, and then jump in, commit to it. Don't start, and then I'm going to go over here. Then I'm going to go over here. No, get a, a plan here, okay? Then number three, choose a Bible study method. What method are you going to use? Now, I'll give you a little tip here. I suggested to you, and I'll suggest it again in a minute, about eSword. If you do have eSword, which is a great app for beginners in their Bible study, you can download so many great things in eSword. But there is a book that you can get for free through eSword, or you can get it for like $2 on Amazon. It's by R.A. Torrey, and the book is called How to Study the Bible. Now, it's about 100 pages long. It's free on eSword. You go to resources, I think it's called, or, or something like that, and you can download the book for free. And in that book, it details most of these various Bible study methods. It'll go through in some detail how to do these Bible study methods. I couldn't take the time to do every one. It would have, it would have just really taken me several lessons to get through in depth how to do each of these studies. So I'm going to give you brief summaries of how to do different Bible study methods, okay? We already addressed them several weeks ago a little bit, and I'll explain a little bit more here. So you can choose one of these ways of studying your Bible, and then you can mix them too. Single book study. Single book study. I recommended two books there. Explore the Book by J. Sidlow Baxter, or Briefing the Bible by J. Vernon McGee. And apparently if you're going to be a good expository preacher, you have to have J as like your first initial 
and then you have to go by your middle name, J. Vernon McGee, J. Sidlow Baxter. I don't know where that all came from. But anyway, uh, but explore the book by J. Sidlow Baxter. It's about that thick, and you can get it on Amazon for 6 or $7. I had it down here the other day, last week, when I gave you examples. And uh, what Explore the Book does is it takes every book of the Bible, and it'll tell you all the main themes of the book. It'll give you background about every book. It's not like a verse-by-verse -verse commentary. It'll tell you information that you need before you start the book. Briefing the Bible is free online if you go order it from J. Vernon McGee's website. I think they ship it to you for free. And uh, Brother Lonnie Quintani got it for me years ago. And, I, and I, you look through it, and you can look through Philippians or whatever, and it'll tell you who it was written to. It'll tell you what the main themes are. It'll break it down into different headings to help you learn what to look for. And so those are a couple resources for you that may help. Uh, they, they give you an overview of the book before you dive in. They can help identify the themes and help you know what to look for. Again, you may find it different. I, I find a lot of times that things they say in there, as I go through several different times in my Bible study, I'll see something different, I'll get something different, but at least it helps to understand before you're reading. So you could, if you're going to do a single book study, go verse by verse, or go paragraph by ch paragraph through the book. Look for the themes of the book. Try to understand what each verse means and what the entire passage is saying together. So you're looking at a verse and you're finding, what does that verse mean? And then you're stepping back and saying, what does that paragraph mean? And you step back, okay, what does this mean in the entire book? And you're just verse by verse, paragraph by paragraph, going through. Number, uh, the, the next blank there, look for the main idea. I'm trying to go quick, so I'm talking fast, because I've got like 17 minutes left here. Look for the main idea of the book and for the specific passage you're studying. You, you, okay, you read uh, Hebrews. What's the main thought? Jesus is better is the main thought, I'll just tell you. But uh, you, know, you, you may go through there and say, what's the main thought of this? In Romans, what's the main thought? Uh, as you go through uh, Colossians, what is the main thought that's being gotten across in this passage? So you're going through that. And then you can look at your paragraph you're studying and saying, what's the main thought of this paragraph? What is being, uh, what, is, uh, what, is tr what are they trying to get across in this paragraph? Okay, you can look at how all the verses relate to one another, determine what the author is trying to say throughout the entire book, and then find applications for your life throughout every passage. I wrote all this down for you so that you can go through and kind of uh, you know, think through it if you want to do that. Number two is a topical study. A topical study. Again, we're setting a topic. Pick a topic you want to learn about. And then look up all the references regarding that topic. See how that topic is described or used in Scripture. It could be something that you're going to find a lot about, like love. You're going to find a lot about that. It could be something that you won't find as much about, envy, you know, or something like that. Uh, and you could pick that topic and look through it throughout all the scripture and find out how it is used, what is said about it. Uh, you, you'll then read the stories that involve that topic, draw conclusions from the evidence presented, and ask what it means for your life. Number three, you could do a character study or a biographical study. And so just some tips for a character study. Okay, you're going to study Nathan the prophet. You're going to study Deborah. You're going to study, uh, you know, uh, Saul, whoever it may be. St uh, choose a Bible character and look up every story with them in it or every scripture reference where they are mentioned. You know, because sometimes you, you may find a person in the Old Testament is mentioned in the New Testament. Esau is mentioned again in the New Testament. As, you know, he mentioned the Old Testament, but he, he's mentioned the New Testament as well. And so you'll find some of that there. Piece together the information given about the person and try to discern what type of person is presented in Scripture. Uh, if you want to do a study on Joab, Joab. Joab was a complex person. He was David's captain of the army. And Joab had ups and downs. Joab had some good things about him, some bad things about him. He's a very unique character to study. And so you can form your own opinion by going through and doing that. You could ask, what flaws did that person have? What good traits did they have? What can you learn from their mistakes, successes, or life in general? What impact did they have on other Bible characters or stories? There are two books, one called um, All the Men of the Bible and All the Women of the Bible is another book by Herbert Lockyer. You can find them through Zondervan online. Those may help if you want to do character studies. And so there's another way there. Also, the next is chronological study. Chronological study. Uh, for that, you'll have to either have a chronological Bible uh, or buy one from Amazon, or they, they may have one online for free. I don't know. I, I didn't find one when I was looking way back when, but 
but, uh, <clears throat> but you'll, you'll need one of those if you're going to do that. And then you can pick a passage and study through that passage in chronological order. See what parallel passages say about the passage you're reading. So as you're reading, you'll read 1 Kings, and then if you're, if some, for certain chapters of 1 Kings, you'll read a chapter of 1 Kings, and then you'll read 1 Chronicles, and then you'll read Isaiah. Because it all happened at the same time. And Isaiah 35 and 36 is the same as 1 Kings chapter, 1 or 2 Kings, chapter 22 is 2 Kings. Chapter 23 and 20, uh, 19 or 20 to 22, somewhere in there, is the same as Isaiah 35 and 36. And then 1 Chronicles or 2 Chronicles will have that story too. And so now you're seeing that play throughout. When you get to the Gospels, you'll see Jesus give a parable in Mark, and then uh, then in Luke, then in John. And you can see the parallels of what is happening and then also what other stories are going on at that time. And so that's just a neat way of studying the Bible, too. You'll see the timeline. uh, And then after you've observed and interpreted, you can ask what it means for you today. There's also types study. This is a more difficult one, more in-depth, and it's more dangerous in a way because you have to be careful that that if you're going to find a type or a picture of something, that it has to actually have some biblical background to it. But what that's talking about there is you can start with an obvious type, more obvious, like the Passover. Okay, when you look at the Passover, it's a type of Christ. It's a picture of Christ. You know, the, the innocent lamb being uh, 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 slain and the blood on the doorpost and how many days outside the camp and, and all these different things are all a picture of Christ. The tabernacle was a picture of Christ, step by step. The high priest, there was pictures there. The New Testament calls Jesus the great high priest. So those are, are there, those are obvious types, and as you're studying them, you're, you're looking at what it says in this passage, and you're going to the New Testament, and you're seeing how it relates to Jesus, and you can see that's a picture of Christ in the Old Testament, or whatever it may be. And so there's some, it, like, uh, let me just give this to you. Study names and their meanings of people and places. I don't think I wrote that down grammatically correct, but you get the picture there. Study the names and their meanings of people and places. Names are important in the Bible. I don't think my parents knew what Eli meant when they named me, all right? But, but in the Bible, they knew, all right? They, they knew the names. Do you think it's a coincidence that Jesus was born in Bethlehem? What does Bethlehem mean? Beth is house, okay? Uh, 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 Let me remind you of something in the New Testament. Jesus is called the the bread of life. Bethlehem means house of bread. Do you think it's a coincidence that Jesus was born, the bread of life, and the house of bread? (laughs) No, it's not a coincidence. Those names mean something. Those names are pictures. Those names are important. And, uh, And so you can look those type of things up. You can study the biblical history of the names of people and places. Hebron. Uh, what's the history of that? What is the meaning of it? It's, it's a rich, rich history. Things like that. And then you can ask yourself, can you see Christ in the types that you study? What does it mean for you? So these are just different, various methods you could use. And the last one there is a word study. A word study. What does unction mean? Unction. It's used. It's used in First John twice, chapter 2. What does unction mean? What does propitiation mean? What does atonement mean? What does justification mean? You can run across words like that, or you can run across common words. Maybe you're reading through the list of the the fruit of the Spirit and works of the flesh in Galatians chapter 5, and you see the word lasciviousness. When's the last time you used the word lasciviousness in conversation? Okay, Probably not often. Uh, Concupiscence, uh, malice, uh, clamor. These words like that, you can say, well, I want to know what these mean. Good. Do word study. And you can look at them throughout the whole scripture and figure it out. Notice, by the way, if you're doing a word study, notice if you use a concordance, if there is a different Greek word or more than one Greek word for one English word. I told you before, the word love in the Bible is at least three different words, I believe four different words in Greek. The word world, there's cosmos, there's, other, there's different, uh, uh, oikimini, I think is one of them. There's different uh, words for the word world. In, uh, in the Bible. And so looking those things up, we'll say, oh, that's what that word means here. So that helps. Use a concordance to locate the words you want to study. 
Notice if there are different Greek words for the same English word. Define the word using a Bible dictionary and see how it's used throughout Scripture. How do those words and their definitions fit in Scripture? How do they apply to your daily life? So those are just some methods you could use. And if you want more information, I, I would just say, you know, get the R.A. Tory book, or I could recommend some other ones that could give you some in-depth things there. Or I could talk more about it personally. The most common st uh, study methods to start out with would be your single book studies, your topical studies, or your word studies. And I think probably next would be character studies. But uh, I think chronological and type studies are a little bit deeper, but uh, you start wherever you want to. Maybe for you, it's word studies, and you're just going to start defining words and defining what this means, or, or you're going to look at certain topics in Scripture, or you're going to just take it verse by verse through a certain book. I encourage you, any one of those is a great place to start. Number four, though, after you have chosen your Bible study method, now you got to choose your resources. Choose your resources. And this really will depend on how much money you want to spend, or how much money you can invest in Bible study. And maybe you can invest a lot right now. Again, um, you, you, know, you, you probably want to start something small, not spend a million dollars on something, uh, you know, but build up from something small. And again, I'd highly recommend eSword. If you have it on your PC at home, it's free. It's free. It's a free download. It's on all my computers. Um, if you want it on your iPhone or iPad or, or even on your Mac, uh, you, there is a small fee. You know, I think it's $2 for the app on your iPhone, 4 for the app on your iPad, and 9 for it if you have a MacBook or something like that. Um, you, you know, and, and you do whatever you want. I think uh, I was at the beach with my son and his friends the other day, and they were swimming and having a good time, and, uh, and I had been playing and stuff, you know, but I went to sit down by the snacks, and I sat down by the snacks, and I was like, I got nothing to do except for watch these guys and eat some snacks. I pulled out eSword. And uh, I studied for my last Sunday night message uh, on the bitterness of the heart. I was studying at the beach. And so, um, you know, getting, getting the thoughts there and everything for that. And it's, it's just easy. You can pull out anywhere. You can do it at the doctor's office when you're wasting all that time. If you have to go to DMV, God forbid, you know, you, you, can, you can use that time wisely, okay? And so there's just some things there that uh, would be a help to you. All of the things like concordances and all that, you can find it on eSword or free online. If you go back to last week's message, I listed all that for you. There's free resources online that you can get that can help you get into the habit of study, and then you can build your library as you grow. But have a resource on hand. Maybe for you, you like books, and you really just love having I love to read from books more than my phone. So I love to get a book out and put a book on my table, and whether it's a Bible dictionary, whether it's a concordance or a commentary, I like having a book out. But uh, you do what it works for you. And again, there are different tools for different jobs. Uh, if you're doing a word study, you will need a concordance and a Bible dictionary. If you're doing a chronological study, you'll need a chronological Bible, either one on hand or if you can find one online. If you're doing a topical study or a character study, you'll at least need a concordance so you can look up where those people are mentioned. So just you have a resource available for you. Number five, go through the three steps of inductive Bible study. I should have listed them, but I know we've gone through this many times. Observation, interpretation, and application. Make sure you don't skip application. Okay, that's, that's important. Uh, information is good, the blank there. Transformation is better. And transformation comes through the application of the Word of God. So go through the three steps. You've got, okay, you've made your plan, you've chosen your passage, you've chosen the Bible study method you're going to use, you've sat down, you've got some resources. It could be as simple as just having your phone on the table next to your Bible, and you're ready to go, you've got a pen and paper, you're reading, you're observing what it says, you're interpreting the data that comes to you, and the text, what it's saying, what it means, and then you're writing down what you got from it. You're writing down, what is God speaking to me? What do I need to do with this? What is the command I need to start doing? What, you know, what decision do I need to make? What do I need to be careful? for today what I need to watch out for and that's what you're doing each time and then number six lastly here choose a way to meditate throughout the day on the truth you learned choose a way how are you gonna do it how are you gonna do it uh, I, I have some suggestions a lot of old-school people probably older than 30 uh, you know and, and and beyond a lot of times there was the old 3 by 5 card 
You know, you always had a stack of three by five cards. And so you could get three by five card and have a stack on your desk or whatever. And every day you get out and write down a quick thought of what God had for you. And, and, you know, you take it and you put it somewhere. You place it on the dash of your car. You know, don't cover up your speedometer. Okay. Uh, you know, but, but uh, you, you know, put it on. And that way you're looking at it on your way to work, on the way home. Uh, you can keep it in your pocket and pull it out throughout the day and think about it. Uh, you could set a reminder on your phone to go off throughout the day. And it could be you know, every two hours, just a little buzz on your phone that reminds you, oh yeah, have I thought about that message again you know, that God gave me this morning? And it's just a reminder to get you to say, a little buzz on your leg will get you to think, oh, that's right, what was I thinking about? What was I, what was I, what was I uh, meditating on today? Oh yeah, that verse and, and what it means. And what did God mean? And you're going through that in your mind. That's a great way. You could write it on a sticky note and put it on your computer. Um, you know, that's another way. Just, just thoughts for you. Any, any one of these that work is great. But make a decision regarding the application you made from Scripture. But I would say also, then pray over it. So God speaks to you tomorrow morning about your anger problem. Then you go to God and you say, God, I just got this from you. You just spoke to me about this. And I want to make a decision today. I'm going to watch my mouth. I'm going to stop it right here. Or it, it, it could be about, you know, um, I, I don't, anything, anything about praising God all day long, even during the midst of trouble. And maybe you're thinking, you know, sometimes when I go into trouble, man, I, I just get mad and I want to blame somebody. And, and today, God, I, you spoke to me about this. I want to praise you all day long. I want to look for things all day to praise you about. Whatever it is, pray about it and commit that to God in prayer. It helps to solidify the concept in your mind when you do that and you're putting it into practice. You could come up with your own way of doing it. <laughs> I, I may suggest 100 things, and maybe none of them work for you. So the, the, one of the last blanks here, whatever works for you is the best way. Whatever works for you is the best way. That's the way that matters, if it works for you. It has to work for you. Your Bible study does not have to work for me. And my way of Bible study does not have to work for you. But your Bible study has to work for you. It has to be producing fruit, something that you're going to continue to go back to. So, and look, make it easy on yourself. I'm not saying you, know, you have to have a stack of 24 books. It has to be utter silence. There cannot be a squeak of a, of a board in the floor or else it's all lost. And, and you've got you know, this, this two-hour block of time. I'm not saying that. Uh, there, there is no one right way to do it. You have to, look, we, we all have busy lives we all have busy lives. There's commitments that we have. But God and his word are the most important thing. And so give your best time to him. And God will change your life. And he even said, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. All the rest of the stuff will fall into place if you get the big rocks in first. You ever see the illustration? You put the big rocks in. And then you can fill the rest with the little rocks, fits all around it. But if you put the little rocks in first, the big rocks don't fit. God is a big rock. You put him in first. Okay? You do his way, you do things for him first. So, after this lesson, it's time to get to Bible study. If we all begin to do something with these lessons, our lives will be changed, our church will be changed. So, the question, the last blank, will you make the commitment to start on this journey? Now look, if you want help and you, you have a question about something, you run across something, or, or you want to just update me and let me know how your Bible study is going or whatever, feel free to reach out to me. Feel free to let me know. I have changed my number and email so you can't get a hold of me. But, you know, I'm just kidding. But feel free to let me know. I, I want to know. I want to encourage you in it. I want to rejoice with you. I want to help you. And, uh, and, and let's commit together, going into the fall, that we would have a strong backbone of our church that are faithfully studying the Word of God and learning and growing. Father, thank you so much for your Word. I, I pray that a very practical message like this would find a home in our hearts. God, I pray that every person listening to this lesson would, would find what works for them, and it would just get them on track of doing something every single day and learning and growing and developing and growing in their love for you, growing in their love for others, growing in their love for the Bible. God, help us to please, uh, uh, Lord, just figure out a way. It's uh, such an important thing to do that we have got to make time every day 
for our Bible study, to get into the Word of God. So help us today with this. Help us going forward. Give us a plan, Lord, that we can all use and that would work for every member. And again, thank you for the precious Word of God. May we see transformation in our lives and in our church going forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you have just gotten the message there. Now take it out and do it, okay? Love you, folks. See you Saturday morning for soul winning. God bless you. You're dismissed. Mm -hmm.